the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. Together, reducing fraud worldwide. Technology is being used to fight fraud on a lot of different levels. So whether it is the concept of big data and data analytics looking at volume of claims and claims patterns and particulars with respect to automobile accidents and individuals with disabilities that are maxing out benefit plans or um, whether it's a product limitation in this particular area seems to have a lot of that data that's being compiled with respect to those which is ultimately the technology piece that we didn't have before that someone would look at pen and paper and not make those comparisons or being fed into a machine that's spitting out result and flagging criteria with respect to that. So that creates massive issues for in individuals to first identify the fraud because we can fight the problem if we know there is a problem. If we don't know that there is, then it's really hard to fight it. And then the next issue with respect to the technology is simple things like if I had an individual that was John Smith and I've never seen John Smith before and I have to go out and do an interview on him, I can do background ahead of time because he's got a resume out on LinkedIn or he's got a Twitter account and I know what he's about or where he's working. If I have to do surveillance on him, he's been so kind to put up a photo for us. Years ago, I would have to sit in a stairwell for years and identify eventually everybody that comes out of that stairwell or that apartment building to see who my target is. Now I know what he looks like before he even start because he was nice enough to put a photo out from there. Those are all issues with respect to technology that didn't exist 10 years ago and now that we utilize on a daily basis and we're like, how do we survive without these? License plate readers, things along those lines that identify plates in a particular area or a target at a particular location. We have machines when you go into the airport. I flew out today and obviously they're doing data analytics and facial recognition software and things along whether or not somebody's heartbeat's too high or too low and identifying risks with respect to that. There's really no limit on what technology can do for us. We have a beacon in our pocket that's operating 24-7 that shows where we are at any given point. I can check to see where my kids are, where my spouse is, what's going on, or whether or not that's my target, I can see where they are. We have an electronic leash that's tagging us wherever we are at any point, any time. None of that existed. So that's what we've got in the last 10 years. God knows what's going to occur in the next 10 years beyond that. And it's coming at such a faster pace now. It's another half of that. So what we dealt with in 10 years last time will maybe come to us in five this time and two and a half the next time and it continues to fold upon itself. I think geo technology, so the idea to locate an individual given what is broadcasting their cell, their tweets, their posts, all those issues on our phone or electronic leash at any given moment is one of the most greatest advances for us if, it, if it's available, if it's information that's available. If you take the simple concept of an employee that may be bound by a uh, non-compete clause or they're not supposed to be interacting with competitors or we're worried about them curbsiding merchandise and selling out of the back of the truck and things along those lines. Geo-footprinting their activities with respect to their, whether it be their social media accounts or having a geo-tracker on the truck and knowing what patterns they utilize is technology that we can utilize now to help us assist in finding that claim and to look at where those problems are going to be, identify what it's going to happen, where it's going to happen, and how it's going to happen potentially because we look at the patterns with respect to that. So that's fantastic. And then with artificial intelligence, they have predictive models that will allow that to figure out, okay, if he does this pattern on these days, the likelihood he's going to maintain this pattern, and they look at predictive models on that and, and get beyond the brain of an average individual that does it in an unbiased fashion, that just looks at the facts. So I think initially um, the response is everything can be prevented, um, and then the follow-up to that is nothing. Um, as human beings, we've been dealing with individuals that try to take advantage of scenarios or situations for as long as we've been around. It hasn't changed in thousands of years and it's not about to change anytime soon. It's the proverbial scales of the good guys versus the bad guys and depending on what side you see yourself on and where you are on who's ahead of the curve at a particular moment, right? So we've changed currencies, we're ahead of the curve on that because they can't catch up to us right now. We just changed that, we're winning the fight. We get lazy in that sense, we sit back, 
We don't do anything about the currencies. We don't change any technologies. Now counterfeiting's through the roof, right? So there's that simple comparison that you can look at, and the technology is no different. What we think works today and is fantastic is is not working tomorrow. And and the greatest example of that is what was available for. In, in certain social media platforms that was totally accessible when that platform came out. Um, again, we'll call it InstaFace. And if InstaFace is out there, then it was wide open when it first came out. And then it got shut down and there was privacy reminders and everything else, but information was still uh, accessible and readily available and now it's been locked down a little more how much longer till it's completely gone or otherwise right so it constantly evolves and we need to evolve with it